Hello viewers and listeners, welcome to the African Narratives, where we celebrate the diverse stories, cultures and experiences of Africa. I am Femi Shuewu. This is truly a special episode as Africa Web TV recently had the distinct honor of sitting down with one of Africa's most legendary musicians and a true vocal powerhouse with a voice that resonates through the ages and melodies that transcend cultural boundaries. He is none other than the renowned Salif Keita, the golden voice of Africa. We met Salif Keita backstage for this interview shortly after his mesmerizing set during the 2023 edition of the Sphinx Festival in Belgium. Salif Keita told us he was not comfortable doing the interview in English, but as I could not speak a word of French, he agreed to try and help us out. Before we play the interview, I would like to apologize for the sound quality. As I said earlier, the interview was backstage of the Sphinx Festival and the sound of other artists filtered through into our microphones. So without further ado, join us as we embark on a captivating conversation with the iconic Salif Keita, an artist, an activist, a living testament to the transformative power of music. I have the greatest honor of my life. Sitting with me today is the legendary Salif Keita, one of the pioneers of African music, one of the people who have made African music known worldwide. Mr. Salif Keita, welcome. Thank you. Let me ask a question that everybody has been asking me mm -hmm. since I said I might speak with you. Mm -hmm. In 2018, mm -hmm. you said you were stopping with music. Yeah. And five years later, yes, you are still going strong. Yes. Why did you change your mind? Music is, it's like breathing, mm -hmm. you know. When when you don't do it, you miss something important. That's why I'm here now. <laughs> so and I, I, I think you understand me. Yeah. It, it's part of my life. So, and I just say, I, I'm not number going to to make album. But uh, concert, no problem. I'm, uh, I like to, to go around. <laughs> OK, because I read somewhere where you said, I'm tired of uh, yeah. traveling. No, no, traveling I don't, don't want to travel every day. Ah. You know, I'm uh, 74 years old. So it's OK to, to film about my body. <laughs> you understand? journey a long time ago mm -hmm. um, why did you decide to go into music 
Okay, because I didn't have a choice. I don't, I don't, I, don't, I had a choice. No choice because I, I go to at school studying, mm -hmm. doesn't work, and no job. So that's why I come um, in in the music. Your music is not just it's Mali music that is the root, but you blend it with jazz, yes, reggae. <laughs> even salsa. Yeah. Even now, uh, in your last album, you did something with Yemi Alade. Yeah, yeah. So meaning Afrobeat. Uh, so, how do you do that? I used to listen many kind of music: African music, uh, USA, USA, Europe. So that's why when I I make music, I mix both. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Concert just now, uh -huh. and a lot of people are just hanging on your voice, okay. and you've been called the golden voice of Africa. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's not me, it's what I know. people who know music better uh -huh. than I do uh -huh. say. How does that make you feel knowing that you are inspiring a lot of new people and older people? I don't know because, uh, okay, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they can answer you, not me. <laughs> but it's it's your voice. It's uh, you uh, who make people happy. You are on stage just. I like singing. Mm. I like singing. I really love singing. Just, uh, what sets you apart is also that you are an advocate for Albanism. Mm -hmm. You have two foundations. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you tell us about that? Yes, because it's it's not it's not easy to live with. Uh, uh, this problem, uh, I mean, uh, I've been albinism because because people doesn't doesn't know really how you can have your mom is black, your papa is black, and why you come white? So they don't have any any explanation for that. And you you it is many kind of uh, too much discrimination, and they need help. I think albinos people they need help uh, for the skin cancer in the society in society how they can live with the society is they really need help. That's uh, why I, I make a foundation. And has that problem become less or more now with people? I think it's, it's it, it, it get down a little bit. It's now people really you know, in Africa they know. Uh, because they, they saw and they 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 they, they, they found people helping the albino, so they they then uh, they start learning and they they understand now. So the problem is coming down. I think that would be thanks to a lot of effort that you have been um, uh, putting in. Do you think in 50 years? Africa will not worry more anymore about somebody who has I hope so. this color. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> Your music mm -hmm. carries so much joy, mm -hmm. so much happiness, so mm -hmm. much positivity. Mm -hmm. You seem to have decided I'm going to be a positivity ambassador. You know, when people come to see you, they come for happiness, mm. not not a, a sad sad thing. Mm. They really need to be, you know, uh, they don't come for, you know, s s sad feeling. They come f for to be happy. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. You've been playing music for so long. Mm -hmm. What has changed since the time you started with music mm -hmm. and now? You know, I, I think I'm 
um, I have uh, more experience because I used to play with many kind of music. They come from everywhere, USA, Europe, Africa, and uh, India. So now I have more experience. Experience, you know. Before you die, you still learning. <laughs> you still learning. I'm learning. In it. That's a good one. Before you die, <laughs> you are still learning. <laughs> um, you have collaborated with a lot of musicians. Yes. Which of the artists, which of the mo uh, collaborations did you find most rewarding? Okay. Which I was have, the best one? I used to work with many, many musicians, but uh, I used to work with uh, Joe Zabinul. Yeah. Uh, it was really good. And uh, he did good record for me. Amen. That's my best record, I think. Amen. And, uh, and, uh, amen. So I, I used to sing with uh, uh, Cesaria Evora. She's just my, my sister. Yeah. And uh, she passed away. Okay. I always, always think about her because she was a really good, good feeling. It was good. We spent a, lo a good time. For me, my favorite song of yours uh -huh. is Take Care. Take Care, okay. Yeah. What was the message behind the, and, the song? I think Take Care just means like this. To, how do you call that in English? To clap. To, huh? To clap. Oh, yes. Ah. So it's for, for happy. It's uh, for, to make people happy. Dancing and happy. Mm. You are naturally the older generation of mm -hmm. mu uh, musicians. What advice would you give to younger musicians who are coming up now? Okay, I just uh, I have to tell them to make uh, people know about Africa. They, they don't, I, I don't want them to go far from African music. African need help. It's not bad to make Arab music, but to be African, make African music. Last question. Mm -hmm. You've played all over the world. Mm -hmm. Which is your favorite country to play in? I like everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really love people. Thank you very much you. for taking time to speak with Africa Web TV. <laughs>